Hello and welcome to UiPath Essential Training, Image-Based Automation. In a previous training, you learned about recording desktop applications and how to manually add actions to the recorded workflow. You saw examples for three out of the four available types of recording, basic, desktop, and web. Now today, you'll get to know the fourth one, Citrix. The tools and methods it uses are made for automating virtual machines, but they're useful in other types of automation too. Virtual machines usually run on a server and only the image of the interface is streamed to the user. Therefore, UiPath cannot address the interface through the operating system, as you learned with basic recording and selectors. We'll need some special tools and techniques for that. And fortunately, UiPath has methods of dealing with these constraints, but there is one important limitation. You cannot automatically record a set of actions and have them played back. You have to hold the robot's hand and show it what to do at least for now. So how do you do that? You try to teach it how a human does it by finding elements on the screen like buttons or text fields and doing something in relation to those elements, clicking buttons and controls or filling in a text box. Let's see a practical example. We have this remote desktop connection and on the remote desktop we have a dummy banking app. Let's say that we want to click on some radio buttons and fill in a few text fields. What we'd normally do is read the name of an element, then click the corresponding control and maybe type something. A robot does the same. Using click image, you can click on mostly anything. Buttons, menus, text, or somewhere relative to such an element, as long as the image you choose is unique. Let's select this area for the deposit radio button. There is no other identical element on screen, so we should be good. We can choose where to perform the click, inside or outside the selected area. We'll hit OK for a click in the center of the rectangle. Right, next, let's fill out these fields using the same method. Since we can't select something as generic as a text box, we'll choose something unique that's close to it and doesn't move in relation to our text box. Its name is usually a good choice. So select the cash in area and this time choose to indicate where, relative to the yellow rectangle, to actually make the click. We'll pick the text field and type something to help us see the focus. And we'll do the same for the next one. Click image action, click and drag to select, indicate position in the text field next to it, and type. You could use this method for the third editable field too, but let's see a complementary action. Click text. The difference from its system method is that click text uses OCR to scan the screen of the virtual machine for text. Hence, it works even if things like Windows theme or text size are different. Click image, on the other hand, is faster and very reliable, but more sensitive to such graphical variations, and it can fail if colors or background details change. So it's more prone to errors in fluctuating environments. So let's try click text on the last input field. You'll recognize this window from the screen scraping training, but this one has a few more options on the bottom here. The text to be found field is the text that you want to click on or click relative to. We want to click on the third text field, so we'll just enter its name. Now, UiPath will click on it. We want to click next to it, so we'll click set mouse position, and just like before, we'll indicate where to click. In this case, on the editable field next to it. After we insert one more type action, we'll do another click text to press the accept button. Now that's it. Exit and run the generated workflow. Great, it correctly identified the radio button and the text fields. It clicked in the designated spots and typed in the text fields. Inside the generated workflow, there are a few important parameters that you should know about. For the click text and click image actions, options for single or double click and left or right mouse buttons can be changed here and modifier keys can be added here.
Click image also has an accuracy parameter that you can play around with, and at its maximum value 1, the images must match 100% to register as found. 0.8 is a good balance between accuracy and reliability, but feel free to try other values. You should know that click image and click text have some drawbacks, which can make them, in some situations, not 100% accurate. On virtual machines, click text relies on OCR to find the desired text, so even one misidentified letter can throw it off track. And click image is very reliable unless the theme or other graphical elements have changed. So, here's an easy alternative that can be faster, safer, and works in desktop and web apps too. We'll go into it in further detail in a future training, but it's pretty straightforward. So, here's how it works. The trick is simply to avoid using mouse interactions and replace them with keyboard actions such as navigating with the tab key and using keyboard shortcuts to activate different functions of the application. Basically, just add tab and other navigation keys using the type tool. For example, let's type in this field, and after the value, we'll add a tab key to move to the next field. And so on for the rest. Or, you can combine multiple keyboard actions into a single one. Type the first value, then add a tab. Type the value for the next field, then add a tab, and so on. After the last field, the focus moves to the Accept button. So, we'll add a space to press it, and we're done. And that's all there is to it. As you can see, it's a very fast and powerful method to interact with applications, virtual or not. So, now you know how to navigate a virtual machine interface and activate various menus, buttons, and text boxes with three actions, click text, click image, and type into. To get information out of virtual machines, there are again two methods, select and copy and scrape relative. Select and copy is the easiest, but it works only for selectable text, like these text boxes here. Remember that all commands are sent to the whole virtual machine window, so the action is performed on the active text field. And that's all. The two resulting actions are, you guessed it, select and copy. The copied text is available as the output variable of the second action, copy selected text. Of course, you should combine it with any of the three input actions to bring the focus to the intended text field. For example, we could simply drag in a type action and simulate pressing the tab key to move to the next input, and drag in a right line for testing. Let's run it. That's the easiest method of getting text out of virtual machines. But what do you do when some text that you want is not in a selectable field? Easy. Remember screen scraping and how that gave you the contents of the whole window or container? You apply the same output technique, but relative to a fixed element. The action is called scrape relative, and it's here under screen scraping. It allows you to scrape just a portion of an image relative to an anchor. Let's get the result of this deposit and also the transaction ID. We first select the anchor, total deposit, and then indicate the area to scrape. In the scraping wizard, if we play around with the setting, we can see we get a better result with Google OCR and a scale of 3. and continue, then repeat the process to get the transaction ID. Screen scraping, scrape relative, select the anchor, and indicate the area to scrape. Now let's see what we've got. You learned about most of these actions in the screen scraping training, but here's the newcomer.
The scrape relative action is actually a series of three actions. First, finding the anchor image. When an image is found, a region identical to the anchor selection you made is the actual result. Then, UiPath calculates the region that you indicated based on the anchor image, and it gets the contents of that region using get OCR text. There's also a fourth action that resets the clipping region because it's a shared resource and this avoids interference with other operations. It's not mandatory to understand what each of these actions do, but you should know that the scrape relative action generates these four activities. Now all we have to do is add in a couple of right lines and we're done. The output of the scrape relative action is in the get OCR actions. It looks like our results are pretty good, except a couple of spaces that we can clean up later. Now that's all you need to know to start automating virtual machines. Let's do a quick recap to see what we've learned. Today, we focused on image automation and its special limitations. The first tool you learned about was Click Image, and you saw how to use it to correctly identify and click on certain interface elements, like radio buttons and text fields. You also got a chance to try out the Click Text tool, which scans the whole virtual machine for text location and lets you click on any identified text or relative to it. There was also a very useful technique of using the keyboard exclusively to move around an app's interface using special keys like tab, arrows and other shortcuts. In order to get information out of apps, the first and simplest method was select and copy. As its name implies, it simply selects editable text and copies it to the UiPath environment through the clipboard. For more difficult, non-selectable text, you learned about the scrape relative action. It locates fixed elements on the screen and then using OCR extracts your relevant information. That's all for image automation, but if you'd like to know more, have a look at the advanced training. We'll be covering a few more techniques related to virtual environments. Goodbye.